Hi hey everyone, the latest instalment of Chatting to a Lancashire Legend. We're very, very fortunate, fortunate to have with us today a World Cup winner. That's got you thinking, hasn't it? But not from the world of cricket, from the world of rugby. Ladies and gentlemen, we're delighted to introduce you to a proud Lancastrian, a cricket fan and former Red Rose schoolboy player. Ladies and gentlemen, delighted to be chatting with Will Greenwood, NBE. Great, actually. I'm, it's a, I'm, I'm king of technicalities. Technically, I'm Dr. Will Greenwood, MBE. It's, 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 it's we missed that one out. It's amazing, <laughs> what they give you. it's amazing what they give you when you win a World Cup. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, I can imagine all your listeners are thinking, oh, World Cup winner. Who is it? Is it Butler? Is it Bairstow? No, no, no. 2003? Jeez, I wasn't. It was black and white. It was sepia. Who were them? <laughs> Definitely wasn't black and white. What 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 memories of that uh, of that two thousand and three? I think I think we'll, we'll, we'll touch on it a bit later. But that that experience as a professional rugby player playing at the pinnacle of of any stage, it doesn't get any higher than that. That must have been the highlight of your uh, of your career as, as a professional sportsman. Mm. I reckon beating Garstang for Longridge. The Lancashire Cricket League goes a long way to, that push, touch it. to pushing it close. Uh, look, I, I, I do joke about that, obviously, but there is also an element uh, of truth in all that. I, I, I'm from Hurst Green, which is a little village near Clitheroe. Yeah. And, um, my mates down the road... Uh, Adam and, and Paul, the brothers, and further on down the road, Simon, and there was the, the Youngs, the Holdens, Ian Barton, um, all that crowd. And school would finish, and on Smithy Road, if you looked out my back gate, it was Hurst Green uh, sort of football club. Yeah. Out yeah. front, uh, just around the corner, the cricket pitch, um, the bowling green. So according to what month of the year it was, outside... Yeah. Until mum shouted, it's tea time, and then you ran in, and you ran back out, and you got every single second of daylight uh, you could get out of it. And so, why am I telling you that story? Because I then went off to Preston Grasshoppers as a, as a rugby lad, and I just liked playing sport. Uh, and I liked being around people who uh, were keen just to do hours and hours and hours of it. I had an appetite just to, to you know, behind me is this, this in here, and, I, and it's got corks in. And I set myself challenges of throwing caught. I'd watch snails race, basically, is the, is the point I'm saying. So I've always just loved being around people and I've loved competing and I've loved winning. Uh, and I've loved playing and I've hated losing. And uh, the World Cup was just a slightly larger cathedral, a slightly larger audience. But the reality was the same. I was with my mates, Tyndall from Wakefield, and yeah. he was from down south, and uh, Martin Johnson was a Leicester lad. So uh, you sort of grown um, where the demographic of where people have come from. But the concept was the same. We trained together, we played together, we 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 went around the world together, and we just we just loved competing. So I, I do. Say I'm now back at my junior rugby club. I'm going full circle around at Maidenhead now. I've gone full circle, and it just I hope it just proves my point that I just like playing and being around people. And actually, it was, it was nice to do it on a world stage, but I'd have been just as happy doing it for Longridge or Preston Grasshoppers. You mentioned Longridge. You mentioned Longridge again. You you were born you were born in in the in the Ribble Valley, so to speak, big cricket area of Lancashire. Massive, massive traditions of, of great clubs around that area. Uh, and Longridge was, was your club, I take it? Yeah, it was. So uh, I'll ask you a question, which is slightly harsh. You might have done some research. You may know my connection already. Um, John Savage. Have you come across John Savage? John Savage, the, the Lancashire coach? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sav was the first coach when I signed in 86. Uncle John. No way. So you're related to, to Blue, Richard Savage. We, we more, I know him as Blue. Yeah, so... Why do you know, why is he called Blue? I know I don't know because I've, I've known him 30, 35 years and I still don't know why we call him Blue. But, yeah. but he's a member of my golf club. Yeah, I've not seen Uncle John uh, in ages, but it was you know he won the county championship with Leicestershire, I think, in seventy six. Oh, he was a brilliant guy. He was uh, a brilliant guy. I didn't yeah. play that many times, 
I tended to either be on tours or uh, as I got to 19, 20, 21, one of my great regrets in life is I started playing less and less cricket. What I've worked out is my attention, my attention span is a little bit like Dory from Finding Nemo. Uh, <laughs> I've got a six year old like that. Just, I can't remember the question you asked me two minutes ago. Now, people might say, in 10 years, 15 years' time, I've had too many knocks on the head from rugby. At the moment, I'm just looking, I'm just being slightly forgetful. But I concentrated about it in the length of time. I just slowly but surely drifted away from cricket. And it's, uh, it's a massive regret. I watch it. I'm an avid fan. And uh, whenever I can go. And I, 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 was, I was brought up sort of in the glory years for Lancashire. Yeah, you, you were in it. Uh, we used yeah. to traipse down to Lords every summer and win fifteen pots. I mean, if, if, if it was a shortened form of a game, we won. We beat everyone, didn't we? Yeah, you know what? We spoke. I spoke to uh, I spoke to Neil Ferber uh, a couple of days ago, and I spoke to Wazim Akram yesterday from Karachi. Unbelievable. We sat. We just sat like we were having a cup of cup of coffee in, in your lounge. And he, yeah. and he talked about the memories of that team and how close we were. And you've touched on it a little bit with, with, the, with the World Cup. You were playing rugby with your mates. We were playing cricket with our mates. It, there was banter. There was friendship. There was camaraderie. There was, you punch one in the nose and, and we all bleed. And we had, we had that, we had that never say die attitude. But, but that 90s team, if you watch, if you watch that era, uh, it, there must have been some good days that you, that you, uh, that you remember. Yeah, so you'll, you'll correct me with my, I'll get, probably get my eras slightly wrong, but yeah. if, I, oh, I've, if I tested myself, it, and I promise you, I, I've not, I thought, you know, I'll put myself under pressure. Uh, it would be, so, you know, Fowler up, up near the front and Fairbrother, obviously Watkin, Wat, Watkinson, the my legend, God. the king. Yeah. Uh, my favourite little Trundler was Ian Austin. Yeah. Uh, uh, moving in, could move it around. It's like a mag mag magic on a piece of rope, just like a snake charmer. That's moving true, you got, it. you got it, yeah. Well, obviously yourself behind the stumps. Daffy came in fr probably a fraction later. Yeah. Cr Martin and Chapel probably a fraction later. Fraction uh, later. Obviously there was oh. Wazim, who was just the king. Uh, earlier than that, obviously, Clive Lloyd. And I'm, I'm missing... Throw me, you know, the late 80s team, yeah. throw me the names, throw me the names. Right, you, you, you're probably missing Allett, Paul Allett. Oh yeah. my God, how can I forget him? He works at, he works at you... Stanley, round the corner. Junior players frightened, frightened to death of him, but, but a brilliant, brilliant team, man. We had, um, we, had a, we had a lad from Sussex called Gihan Mendes. I don't even remember yeah. Gihan. Yeah, I do, yeah, I do, yeah. He opened in the he opened the bat and we uh, and, and, and yeah we had Fairbrother up top with, with Fowler uh, and of course David Hughes remember yes David Hughes yeah. was out David Hughes the two I've forgone yeah yeah and the cat and uh, I'm just trying to think who else we had that was, you probably you probably nailed it that was the probably the backbone of that team and then a bit later like you said towards the the middle of the. Uh, of the 90s, that's when JC John Crawley came in, who was class. And you, yeah. you, you, you mentioned, I think you mentioned in your book that you, you got school, you schoolboy representative with, with, with Creepy. Yeah, I did. And uh, remind me at the end of this, right? Yeah. So when we'll keep recording and I'm going to leg it down. Yeah. And I came across something. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll leave that as a little surprise, but I just okay. had a big smile on my face. I that was sort of Lancashire in the 13s. I'm pretty sure we played on a, a wide wicket at Old Trafford for the final trial. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I was absolutely plum LBW uh, first ball. But the umpire at the far end, to be fair to him, must have thought it's a trial. We've not, you know, let's let's he gave me a chance. So I got a few. So I played a few games, but the problem was. You never got a bat because Creepy got 700 runs every test game. <laughs> uh, you never got a ball because Ronnie got 11 wickets, 12 wickets. You, got, you can't even get him. You got, you got more wickets than you're allowed to get. Um, so <laughs> those two guys completely dominated. But I loved that, that, that. And then when I went to Sedbra, I moved to, I was sent away to boarding school. Yeah. So I started playing Cumbrian schools cricket and I was delighted to ca captain Cumbria cricket to under 19. But then I went, the, 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 the reason I ended up sort of giving up was I went to Durham University. Oh my God, what a cricket team there. 
I mean, it was basically another county during yeah. university cricket club. Very strong. Yeah. Very strong. And so uh, I also did no work in my first two terms and drank <laughs> far too much and played a lot of rugby. My dad always says that I, uh, I studied rugby and played economics. That's <laughs> uh, what I did at university. <laughs> and, uh, so I had a great time. And I just, I would have been booted out. So I thought I better do some work. So that's when uh, the cricketing time for my uh, sort of sport came to an end but I still I know exactly where my pads are and whenever there's a game locally trundle around a lot of the rugby lads loved it I mean Martin Johnson he yeah. hasn't got bend in his back he's a little upright and a bit front on but he's had his shoulders reconstructed 37 times and he's got a metal pole up his backside to keep his back together you can sort <laughs> of forgive him it but he knows uh, absolutely and there are other lads like Paul Grayson who's a Chorley lad who could probably play yes uh, um, and then there are other lads who you'd think who were really competitive, like someone like Austin Healy. You'd think, yeah, you're sure you'd think he could be a prop cricketer. It, you know, he will take anyone on, he will throw himself in front of Lomu. If I run in with a cricket ball at him, he's gone. Really? Oh, yeah, well, won't, won't stand, won't, 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 doesn't, doesn't get it. Yeah, one of the toughest blokes I know, that small red leather ball. As in coming out in hives. But you you touched on a uh, you touched on on uh, on your schooling and, and, and Sedbra obviously Sedbra massive historic rugby school. But uh, but recently as how was the county county championship games at Lancashire when we when we've yeah. uh, we've had which was amazing one of the most beautiful grounds I've ever visited in the world. And the reason I knew they'd played at Sedbra was that uh, I was. Re- flipping online and a picture popped up of Lancashire's game and I went, that's Sedbo's Pavilion. Anyway, one of my big uh, claims to fame, and I know it's not about blowing trumpets, played the MCC there. Yeah. And um, if you imagine if you're batting on that track with the pavilion on your left. Yes. So you're, yep. playing, you're playing into the hill. Yeah. The, school, the, school house school. At, yeah. the house at the end, the church is behind you. The yes. house in front of you, that was Evan's house. That was my boarding house. And... Um, wow. Wicket at the end of the, the end of the boundary was up a little slope, cross the path, and there's a little bench. And I remember putting Peter Kipax. I think yeah. uh, he was bowling leggies and he was chopsies. So I put him into Evans House Gardens, and and they still talk about the shot that resounded, the shot that went to Evans House Garden. <laughs> Goes down in Sedbury history. Yeah, yeah. The flip side, the flip side of my cricketing stories was Kenny Benjamin was our coach. So I think he was playing down the road at Kendall. Kenny Benjamin, yeah, the West, the West Indian quick. Yeah, and I think he was playing at Kendall. So he'd come and do, um, do some coaching. If you're messing about in the nets, he was such a lovely bloke. And you always assumed a quick would need a 30-yard run-up to be quick. If you're messing around in the nets, and it was, remember, in the Lake District, so it's not the best weather. So the, the nets are a little bit lumpy, so a bit unpredictable at the best of times. And if you mess about, he'd come in off a yard. And he clearly, uh, well, I hope he was trying to miss me. Oh, my God. When you've got a hoop of this big, right? Uh, <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, Kenny, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, knuckle down, left arm, uh, high left elbow. Get it, get it straight. Get it straight. Now, now it's all about the bottom hand, isn't it? I should have I played in the wrong era. You have. You played, you played in the wrong way. But that, that wicket at Sebra, and I've been asked to, to, to point this out as well, that, that wicket at Sebra is a beautiful, beautiful wicket to play to play cricket on. Um, one of the, the big niggles in your cricket inter- career, he's never scoring 100. It mentions it. Oh, more. 81 against Berry Grammar. Berry Grammar? Oh, my, my, area, my area, Berry Grammar. Played across the bloody line. So, you know how you hear these fascinating stories that Hayden was always... Uh, unbelievable, I think, clipping it off his legs through mid on for six. He could, yeah. he was left handed, yeah. was he? That's why, very I got strong, yeah, very, very strong. You know, why he did that is because there was a set, there was a two trees at his hat farm back home, and they got extra points for putting it through the trees, right? Hunting, unbelievable cutter. Was he a cutter of the ball, or was he, he... Cutter, cutter and puller? Yeah, he used to pull off, pull off the front foot, yeah. So he learned in a garage. Um, they need to keep the ball in the garage. So it's all this thing about ten back to the ten thousand hours deal. You get used to particular shots and nerdling and tweaking because of the environment you're in. Yeah. 
I played with a, in my front room at 15 Smithy Row with Dad, who'd sit at the piano stool at the far end. And the wall would be up against my backside, right behind me, and the door, the whole door was the wicket. Right. You know, nudge and nerdle, and if you, hit, if, you hit the, if you hit the coal bucket, you got four, and you did this, and you nudged it. If, if you hit Grandma's shot, you were straight out. And, and there was a door, literally, silly mid. So by my backside, there's a door, and anything popped. And it's the door, it's gone. Dad's in, and then Dad would have back for 15 hours. I'd never get him out. It'd be my turn. So I learned all my life to get inside and play. So give me room with these tick, Mr. Tickalars. Give me room, it's gone. Anything wide is gone. Yeah. Anything that's in at my legs, I'm like, oh, I'm still thinking about the door. So I'm trying to do, I'm playing across it. I'm, I'm not getting it right. And it, it came to haunt me, Berry Grammar. Uh, 81. If you honestly, if you ever bowl against me and you want to get me out, bowling in swingers, starting on middle stump, going towards leg, even drifting down leg. Yeah. Get inside it and play across it. The bowled off my chopping pads, Berry Grammar, 1990, 81. Never. 81. Oh God. Well, you, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to do something about. It. You're gonna have to lay that one to rest. Oh, I put my. I, I played against my lad in the garden. I'm 364 not out. <laughs> so, saying that, will you? You say you say bowling in swinger, uh, in swinger to you pitched up. You used to do exactly the same to me, and I played 20. I played 22 years, and that you got me out every time. Dad would say, show the full face of the bat. You don't need to hit it through mid You show the full face of the bat because of the way you're playing and the ball. Your wrists will roll, it'll end up at mid-wicket. You don't have to hit it. Got a point. Very true. Play, play there. So um, that was one. The other frustrating one, played ample fourth, uh, Delalio's school. Yeah. And um, I got nine for... Really? Was, but yeah, I did. Ali Metcalf got the first at the far end. And, you know, and a good mate of mine, teacher now at Haleybury. He got the first. Uh, and then I got the next nine. Uh, it's, not, it's not a bad career. It's not a bad, not a bad. Uh, I don't know you've got me going. You see, I'm much, much prouder of my cricketing <laughs> than poxy old game of rugby. <laughs> and I, and I find with sportsmen, with sportsmen, there's, there's that, there's that bond of uh, well, well, I know exactly how you were feeling inside, and you probably know exactly how I was feeling inside, and there's that that mixture of excitement and and anxiety that that makes you makes you tick and. That must be like you in, in that World Cup final before kickoff. What was what was yeah. it like? Can you give us an, an insight? And what was it like? I I just can't I can't get it. Yeah, the first the Monday before the game, Monday and Tuesday was excitement. We're in a final, uh, but it's far enough away then not to feel the nerves. Wednesday and Thursday, I could hardly get out of bed. Just terrified. Terrified, and I can genuinely consider pulling my car um, to, to miss the game. I thought I can't be the bloke who lets everyone down. Just the fear, the, the, the responsibility of it. And then when you wake up on Saturday, it's an evening game. It's nine o'clock kickoff. So again, you're like, oh, eight o'clock. Are you like, it's the longest day in the world. I mean, the longest day. I just especially slept the whole day. Every time, because if I was awake, I was panicking. And there's all these fears, and you think, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? And then you get on the bus, you arrive at the stadium, and you go, yeah, that's what I do it. Absolutely mega. Here we go. Uh, and you're in the change room, you're looking around, and you got uh, people like Phil Vickery, raging, but the Raging Bull, and yeah. Lawrence Delalio, and Neil Back, and Martin Johnson, they're all there. And Peg next to you is Wilkinson, and Tyndall's the other side. And you go, and we're going to be all right tonight. We're going to be all right. And the tunnel, the really, really uh, special, special moments. And, you know, it, it was one of those nights where I look back, I genuinely feel that the Aussies were a good sign. Mm. I feel we had so many battle scars from games we'd messed up and blow, but enough uh, top two to to have worked out what went wrong in those big games, to be able to understand that whatever came out of the opposition change would be all right. So weirdly enough, once I was at the stadium on match day, hugely fond memories, no anxiety, no stress, do my next job, make the next tackle, make the next pass, 
get up, support, scoreboard will look after itself. It, 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 it will do with this team. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if any of that sort of conveyed it, but it was just, and then afterwards, there was this change where no one wanted to leave because it wasn't because we were having a massive party. Yeah. That would sort of come later. It was, it was an understanding because there was the, you might think, oh, the old rugby players are all dull. Some really bright lads in there. I don't mean three A's at A level. I mean yeah, yeah. emotionally bright lads. Mm-hmm. And you sort of knew that that team would never play together again. The realisation. Yeah, and it's, it, it's yeah. Cut, it run its course. Um, so we had a couple of great hours in the changing room. Tunes were on, but not banging out. No. Dance floor hits. You know, Neil Diamond and that sort of stuff just chirping right. up in the background and just sat there eyes strapped to every part of the body yeah. and uh, and having a beer so it was it was unbelievable unbelievable right. um, so let, let, listen let's have a look at this this, this little surprise you've got oh uh, close your eyes close your eyes open tell me when go go <laughs> like it's your school's cricket association yeah, it's a bit snug. That is incredible. So that would be 1984-5. And if I take it off without revealing my midriff, I might not be able to get it off. <laughs> and my little name badge in the back. So who was, can you remember, Will? Can you remember who was in charge? Who was your like, managers, coach, selectors when, when you were in that? Can you remember? Was no, it Stamp and... Colin Dunkley and people like that. Oh, yeah. yes, I do remember Dunkley. I do yeah. remember Dunkley. Um, I'd, be lying, I'd be lying if I, I, if I could name any more of them. But, yeah, uh, yeah really special. And, and just, as you say, you sort of keep your lucky socks or your from rugby and you keep little bits. But, um, yeah, great. That, I mean, that, a lot of that. Means proudest a lot. moment for any schoolboy cricketer that was to receive that L- LSCA LSCA rosebud. You notice it's a rosebud as well. It's not, yes. it's not bloomed into the the full blooming in rose. Yeah, it's the rosebud. Look at that. That's uh, that is that is tradition at its highest for you. Yeah, and yeah. you know, <sighs> brilliant. What, what that's brilliant. All members of the Lancashire cricketing community, fans, followers, players, supporters, car park attendants, burger makers, they're all without you. There is no game of cricket over the following few weeks. Please do stay safe. We will get through this and we will be back out on a cricket pitch before you know it in the blink of an eye, watching our mighty county destroying everyone else.